Welcome back to the Quiet On Set podcast powered by Cineman. I'm Jon Graf and as always, I'm joined by Lachlan Tealy. There's not a lot that happened this week in the world of the film industry. It was super quiet, so that's going to make our news segment very short. But there are a couple trailers we'd like to just quickly discuss. Just a couple of them. And then, uh, Lachlan, you caught up on some of the episodes of the latest season of Black Mirror and watched that uh, latest Transformers outing rise of the beasts i caught a couple of new things as well i binged the entire new season of the bear just in one sitting was great i'll get into that a bit more later on i uh, watched a hard r-rated comedy with jennifer lawrence no hard feelings um a new animated film from uh dreamworks ruby gilman teenage kraken and a couple more things we'll get into that in what we've been watching today's main topic of conversation is going to be asteroid city the latest from wes anderson and starring the entirety of hollywood every single one of them i gotta make sure to remember this movie correctly because it's been a while since we've seen it because flex flex we saw this one in gun but uh, yeah, let's cue up that intro and get into the show. We are professional. This, this is a professional podcast. Yes. Breaking that and better for song. Hello there. <laughs> Which actually did you this get is me a hat a as bit... well? Um, yes. So I've got Dune Cam. <laughs> it's just a camera <laughs> with my Dune Steelbook. Lachlan, uh, before we talk about all the stuff that we watched this week, we well did watch something. A couple of the latest uh, trailers. Uh, it wasn't a big week for news, but there were some intriguing uh, little teasers and trailers that dropped over the week. Well, mainly uh, the new Luca Guadagnino film Challenges uh, was uh, a really sexy look at tennis. He's just like, you know, take something and make it sexy. That's Luca Guadagnino's thing. He can do that even with cannibalism. Any thoughts on on the trailer here? I, uh, not a lot, other than. I'm not, I guess, as madly in love with Luca Guadagnino as you are. How so dare I'm not you? like I, I'm not e- eager for this movie, but I'm not like not looking forward to it either. It does look pretty yeah. good. Uh, I really did like uh his previous film and I guess oh, uh, his previous films, they were also pretty good. I was you know, I guess his entire thing is just love stories. I don't know if he ever wants to kind yeah. of diverge from that. I mean, but if he, if he wants to, he different. could probably do some cooler stuff. But anyway, yep. uh, here we are. Another love movie. Here we are. Tennis, threesome. Can she Can't manage wait. four balls at the same time? That's the question, the big question of the movie that we're all asking. You just were afraid to, to say it. I, I said it. So thank me later. Uh, I'm looking forward to, to this one. Uh, the feisty Mike Feist uh, is looking great in this. And the memes are already great. And I feel like it's just going to do even more of that good memes good memes uh not as many memes just a bit more of vibes uh, uh vibes are coming out of uh sofia coppola's latest film i got a bit of a teaser for the upcoming priscilla movie uh that's focusing on the wife of elvis presley didn't get a lot here lachlan right uh i would say the opposite you get quite a lot which right. is not just a lot, not story enough. Uh, yeah 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 no and story that doesn't points, matter yeah. and it's a good exactly, trailer. Yeah. Like it's it's, it's, it's a, a really really good trailer for that. I'm yeah. excited because it's a, a voice you don't hear a whole lot about. Obviously, Elvis gets a lot more of the star power in the relationship. We've already had a Elvis movie fairly recently to yeah. some sort of success. Uh, but I'd like to see on the other side give Priscilla a voice to tell this story. So I'm quite excited, and obviously. Sophia Coppola is an incredible director. She knows what she is doing behind the camera. So I'm very excited. Yeah, and she's great. I mean, even early on in her career, she tackles those kind of on the fringe of societal acceptance type of with age difference. Those stories, you know, set in Tokyo with uh, Bill Murray and Scarlett Johansson, uh, Lost in Translation, was like, Something that has some similarities, at, at least when it comes to the age difference. Although I feel like that was wasn't straight up as much like a love story as obviously this is, and this is a bit more historical. Um, I don't know how like open she'll take it with like how literal she tries to stay on on history and how much she she reframes certain bits and recontextualizes them. But I'm I'm very keen. It's looking great. It's shot on film. Challenges also shot on film, looking crispy clean. Uh, then, um, you know, the hype is real. Stay 
I don't know, to the, to the moon with these trailers, because uh, Dumb Money just releases. We, we talked about, you just mentioned like in Asteroid City, the entirety of Hollywood is, is starring in it. Here, it feels like a bit of a, a downgrade, not, not as many like huge big names, but there's still a ton of people in Dumb mm. Money. Uh, and I, I, I couldn't really figure this trade out yet. I don't know if I should be excited or concerned. Uh, how are you feeling about it? Uh, I'm looking forward to it because I would love to see this story put on the big screen. It was quite fun to follow when it was actually happening. Uh, cause yeah. I, funnily enough, was following that subreddit uh, when it was sort of in its infancy and then I watched it explode. So it's going to be exciting to see it on the big screen. And mm. uh, yeah, there's a ton of people in this movie that are yeah. often quite funny and are really good at performing at the same time. So I, I just, I'm, I'm actually quite excited. Yeah, I, f I feel like I should be excited, but it, it, like the thing is, I, I don't think I'm the biggest like Adam McKay movie. This is not an Adam McKay movie, but it's giving off the vibes of what an Adam McKay comedy on like some kind of financial government thing would be. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. I recently watched the big show. So you're short. hating it for not being Adam McKay because you hate Adam McKay. What? Hmm. No, it, it, it's, it's giving me the... Slippy. Yeah, the he made um, I Tanya, and most recently Cruella. Exactly. So, but but that's Disney. I feel like you can disregard because you probably don't get like that much. Well, there were some okay. weird choices that I didn't really love in Cruella, but uh, but yeah, I don't know. It could be great. It's it's got like a great cast. I just really hope uh, this did, quick turnaround uh, the script is any good. You know, you don't know. Three episodes of this. Pam and Tommy. Oh, okay. I was wondering why Sebastian Stan is in, in it because he doesn't seem to have like a huge role. There, there weren't like a lot of just lines that he had. Uh, lots of he lines also in Pam and Tommy that he was Apple doing. He Watch commercial. He did. Okay. That's... <laughs> was Pam and Tommy on... No, that was a Hulu show. I was about to say like, is he just in with, with all of them? He's got like mm. the Oscar thing with I, Tanya. He's got like Disney in his pocket. But I think Pam and Tommy was also Disney. But good to know mm. he's he's on on Apple as well. Uh, they're watching him. Uh, okay. So lastly, uh, Craven the Hunter. Um, the next outing in the Sonyverse, uh, coming later this year already with the one and only. Uh, you said when we watched the trailer, the biggest uh, glow up in in recent memory with uh, Evan Taylor. Wait, I was about to say Aaron Taylor Joy. Anna which, Taylor Joy. Anna Taylor Joy Not together the name. with. What's yeah. his name? Aaron yeah. Taylor, uh, Taylor Johnson. Johnson. Same, almost. Like, they could be siblings. You never know. He might be like half Argentinian and from the UK. Could yeah. be. Yeah. Uh, but no, he, he's, he's got a craving for the hunt. That's Craven the Hunter. And he is alongside Russell Crowe uh, doing another mm. accent. Uh, Russell Crowe, I feel like more... I, like, we love Aaron Taylor Johnson. But Russell Crowe doing accents in literally every movie he's in now is kind of a nice era to be in. I don't know how you feel about it. Because uh, is he, wait, no, yeah. he's Kiwi or is he Aussie? I, he's I always not forget. He's Australian, but ah. he basically is. He's from New Zealand. He's, okay, so I, I was right on that. He's, he's Kiwi, he's Kiwi. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, 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 it, from experience, uh, from the New Zealand there's that you've met are they good at good at good at voices good at accents or did they usually uh, just like just do just no, do do of... as be as general as possible to generalize an entire population in like one sentence please luck one can you do that <laughs> yes and my answer is yeah nah yeah nah but I, I, I don't yeah. even know if Russell Crowe is any good at it, to be honest, because <laughs> it, it just always comes from... I mean, he wasn't bad in The Pope's Exorcist uh, with, like, his, his uh, Italian that he spoke, but here he's doing more of, like, generic Russian type-ish thing. Um, and I forgot if in 4, um, four uh, what... Was it Greek that he did? Or Yes. Okay, yeah. Zoo. Craven the Hunter looks really bloody. Uh, so you said See, you, you said you enjoyed is, it, right? With his accents, though, that the funny thing is, uh, mm. Australia is a very multicultural place. So yeah, yeah. you have a lot of, uh, I guess, people with accents 
uh, speaking English because it's a predominantly English speaking country and you have people from all mm. over the world who move here. And funnily enough, Russell Crowe, born in New Zealand, grew up a decent amount in Australia from mine, right. which he did. Mm. And I remember reading an article about him in Thor, Love and Thunder that he would basically channel the people he grew up with like the, the 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 Greek people he knew growing up, their accents. Ah. So he's probably doing the same thing where he like the yeah. Italian people in Australia, like their English accent, or at least their English ac- speaking accent they had. He's channeling that in the Pope's Exorcist. Yeah, Whatever yeah. he's channeling in Craven, I guess we'll see soon. But yeah, yeah. I mean the trailer did. Uh, if you don't want to be spoiled, then I mean from what the trailer literally tells you, but it seems like he's he's a puddle of blood. Uh like halfway through the trailer so i feel like it's giving away that it, it's not going to be like a full-on daddy issues movie unless your dad is somehow a transmorphed rhino um and hopefully that's mm. not like that last shot is not just the last shot in the movie like in uh, the amazing spider-man 2 and we do get a bit more of of rhino and uh, maybe a tease of some some other creatures as well uh somehow a really loose tie-in with spider-man will probably be there uh but i hope it's just gonna be less terrible than morbius i i don't think this is going to be any good just from what i could tell from the trailer i just hope it's not terrible that's that's all i'm asking for i think you would hope that for most movies coming out but uh yeah i can't come up with something that i would actually actively root against i feel like that would be a toxic way to go into a movie to like want it to fail. Uh, but yeah, that's that for the traders. Uh, let us know what, what you'll be craving. Um, and hey, nice. Yeah. And uh, what your most anticipated movie out of the four is. I'd, I'd actually be keen to, to hear if like someone is really looking forward to Craven because we're both not familiar with the comics like at all. Uh, I, I do have some of the... <laughs> At like a flea market, I saw someone had like a bunch of German first uh, edition um, Spider-Man comics. Mm. I think like probably a hundred issues. And I just bought them for like 20 bucks. I've never read them. And on a couple of them, I think there is Craven on it. Uh, so I, I like his design. It's really out there uh, when it comes to... Well, I, but I, I don't know anything about this character, so... Uh, I feel feel like from the recent uh, trajectory, I don't think this is going to be something that's relevant for the Spider-Man movies because they tend to not succeed and it's never woven into the main Spider-Man plot, but uh, but still, just rooting for an okay-ish movie. All right, so Mm. speaking of rooting for movies to, you know, do well and not flop, uh, there's no real news this week other than the, I guess, more general lackluster performance of some, like, really big big box office movies this summer uh we do have like certain success stories that you can see like the super mario bros movie did super well but but that was kind of back in spring and it still is in theaters because like those movies that are for family crowds they do tend to stand way 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 longer in theaters and it it usually is like in, in any good year there's like one good family movie and whatever the next one comes it kind of just like cycles out and there's always usually mm. something for that uh there's a lot of like counter programming that goes on where you program something maybe if so, there's a horror film that's something a bit more lighter uh, usually tends to be unless warner brothers and universal you know on the hand of nolan is doing a standoff and you get barbie and oppenheimer on the same day regardless uh there were some movies that premiered and they aren't doing too hot uh mainly being the flash and elemental uh, are both tracking to be like one of the worst performing um films in their respective universe studio whatever uh i think the flash came in like lower than black adam on its opening weekend it it dropped like quite a bit from already having having quite a weak opening uh which usually big drops that are like 50 60 percent plus tend to be the case if if it's like a huge opening um but it wasn't even that so uh, so far, it's grossed 150 million. Um, being a movie that arguably costs about like 250 million, it's unlikely that this will break even in the uh, theatrical window. And I don't know how much they'll even be able to monetize it after the fact, because you know I don't know how much you can 
sell figures of of uh, Ezra Miller as the Flash, you know, and how many people would actually want to get that. Uh, but yeah, that's that. And then Elemental was also the worst performing uh, Pixar opening for them, I think, pretty much ever, apart from the ones that obviously premiered on the streaming services. I think it came in even lower than than Onward, and it's only grossed uh, 70 million so far at the box office. And that's another like 200 plus million dollar movie. So l- long intro short to this, because uh, they, they are success stories like for Asteroid City and limited release that made a shit ton of money or Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. Do you think Hollywood n- needs to, to change in a certain way the way that they do these blockbusters? Was it just too dense or was it something about these movies? I want to get your thoughts on this. Like, what do you think, Lachlan? I think the success of Wes Anderson and Spider-Verse have got to do with the internet, though. That's the thing. Oh, uh, you think it's it's palpable that, like, the crowds of people... I think well, that no. people... Look, I just had someone in why? the theater, an 80-year-old guy, last night mm. when I was doing a showing for Asteroid City in, in the theater that I work at. And he was like, oh, yeah. Uh, he, he was like, I'm the biggest... Uh, Wes Anderson fan and he like went off to describe me like his favorite moments from like I don't know from like Rushmore I was like okay that's that's really cool uh he really enjoys mm. it so if, he, if like maybe that's an anomaly there uh and it's more the younger crowd that still is going out to see Wes Anderson uh but I feel like the really younger crowd is just like redoing it in a quirky way on TikTok so I, I don't know I feel like it's just like that he's established enough and people tend to go for it in the specific markets because it was out in four theaters in limited release. And I think it had one of the highest performing per theater numbers uh, for, for that limited run. And now in the expanded thing, well, I think the, the numbers aren't in yet for that, I think fully. It's like a, a, at about 7 million, but it was just like in really limited release so far. Uh, so I don't know if it will. It's also like... I think for a cast like this, you'd usually end up paying a shit ton of money. But because he's Wes Anderson, they're not as expensive, I assume. Um, so yeah, on Asteroid City, it's a bit like still, it had a gr- good limited opening. I don't know if it will actually do well with a really competitive summer market. But the other two movies that you were talking about, obviously, yeah, Elemental, what were they? Flash. Uh, Elemental and Flash. Yeah. They, I mean... One, once again, no one's going to go see a movie they have no reason or want to see. People are more restricted with money. People don't want to go and see four or five movies a month. They're going to pick one or two. So you see in a recent couple months, you're going to have Wes Anderson, you're going to have Spider-Man, but then you've also got a Flash and you've got a Pixar movie. All right, cool. What am I going to go spend my money on? The Spider-Man movie that each Spider-Man recently has, even if it hasn't been that great of a movie, has delivered on being entertaining? Or should I go watch that Speedy Gonzalez movie uh, where the guy beats people outside because I saw that on the internet? No, I'm not going to go see that. And then it's the same with Elemental and Wes Anderson, right? Wes Anderson has been popping off on the internet recently and he's always delivered in his films as entertainment. But you know what? Has been entertaining, but they've seen it before. Elemental. If you've seen Zootopia, you've seen Elemental. If you've seen uh, Inside Out, you've seen Elemental. So there's no reason to go see that movie again. But at least you yeah. know that Wes Anderson movie is going to be different. So it, I think it's not that people are, you know, it, there's nothing that Hollywood needs to change other than stop pumping out movies that have already been done, have already been remade. Yeah. Give us a spin on it, like you have with Spider-Verse, like you... Well, Wes Anderson's doing. They're quirky. They're different. They're not the same movie. But do you think there's also a correlation between Pixar's releases having been for Turning Red, for Luca, for Soul, uh, on streaming without additional cost? That like these two hundred no. million dollar plus movies. You think that does has an effect on on like families going out in theaters? Because all of them, Lightyear as well, didn't do well. Uh, or like I guess Lightyear when they. Went, went back to theatrical didn't do well you think that was just like because Lightyear wasn't a great movie as well similar to Elemental that that it well that I just it don't think that work? I just don't think going to the cinema is as much of a family thing as it used to be right like I don't see 
when I go to a screening, I rarely see families going. Maybe maybe I'm not but, seeing family movies. Yeah, but like part of the success in the states, especially, was because there was like um, school break. You know, just I think just started when Spider Man came out. That like it it, it had like huge numbers uh, with a lot of families going to see the movie as well. So I feel like people are still going. It it, it just depends if there's enough buzz uh, buzz about a movie, and you just. I don't know. You can't really, you can't really bank on it being there just because it is a new Pixar movie or it is something in the DCEU that does like multiverse stuff. Hmm. That's just not. And even Transformers is like, I mean, it's not doing horrible, but it's just been on a decline. Uh, I think they've only had in the, the Transformers uh, franchise uh, like two movies that gross over a billion, uh, which for a huge. Uh, franchise like like that you know it's, it's kind of what, what you're hoping for uh success wise uh but yeah I, I didn't want to talk about numbers that much but more if if you actually feel like there needs to be a change in what type of movies are blockbusters if they like need to be budgeted a bit more reasonably a bit more on a smaller scale um and uh additionally also i, I think there were just some stories coming out like some some uh, reports that uh, on like working on across the spider was was a pretty much a shit show a bit as well for some of the animators and Shaka. basically like a, a oh, well I was I was kind of hoping it w- would be different for this one but uh, you know even if the movie is great and, and people are giving it all the five stars in the world uh, you can't really bank on it just being all um you know, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I don't have a saying for this right now. I'm just like picturing, uh, I don't know, chocolate and roses, which is not a saying, but I just came up, up with it. And someone also said like, there's, there's an animator that worked on it. There's no shot that the next one is coming out in nine months because they already mm. were like cranking it to get this one out. And they, they weren't really already working on the second one, which, which is crazy that like in nine months, they want to do the sequel to this. If apparently they're not really that far into the next one. Mm. Uh, but yeah. Enough box office talk or do you have anything else to add here? I've said my piece. Hoping for, for successes for Barbie and, and Oppenheimer though and like the Mission Impossibles of the world too. Um, yeah. Get to a really wide audience and find its its market in the uh, theatrical run. But uh, let's get to the stuff that we've been watching. Lachlan, I'll let you go first. Hit me. What uh, dystopian future did you see in Black Mirror Season 6? Well, I watched the first two episodes, which is uh, Joan is Awful and uh, Locke Henry or whatever it was called. Yeah, Locke Henry. Uh, Joan is Awful was a pretty mediocre start. Not going to lie, I didn't think it was that great, but it had some flair to it. I'll let it pass. Wasn't Mm -hmm. the worst episode of Black Mirror ever. And Lock Henry was one of the best Black Mirror episodes I've seen in a very long time. Yeah. And I think that it was a, a very, very well made episode. Uh, it was dark. It was funny and it was you know, cute at times. But then, you know, it also had some really exciting twists. But yeah. enough about Black Mirror because I haven't finished that season yet. Uh, I watched The Card Counter. Uh, that was fun. Ooh, yeah. Just something to watch on Netflix over the past couple of days whilst I've been uh, playing Atomic Heart, funnily enough. Been playing mm. that new Atomic Heart game that came yeah. out. I've been waiting for patches to get better on PC because PC games are a shit show at the moment. But other than that, uh, two more films I watched. Mm-hmm. Transformers, Rise of the Beasts. I had yeah. a great time with that, not going to lie. I like Transformers. I will never deny a Transformers movie uh, because uh, it's so satisfying and mm. it was so simple. It was like two hours. It was really well paced and didn't get bored at any point. Have to admit, yeah. Transformers Rise of the Beast, better than the last night. Better than... Ooh, Bumblebee? Better than the third one. No, uh, yeah, better than Bumblebee. It was, it was pretty mm. good. It was a pretty good... I thought it's a return to form for Transformers. I'd like to see a little bit more yeah, uh, especially because it had some of the cool older '90s style Transformer look. Yeah, for what do you the, th- uh, Autobots? 
because we didn't end up covering it and and i also caught it uh and i guess slide spoiler, spoiler warning like skip a minute ahead if you don't want to hear this so check the time codes but what did you think about like the, the tease at the end there with uh gi joe i thought it was uh, really fucking dumb yeah but i'm so keen for it eh? <laughs> I'm so ready. I'm so keen. I mean, I'd love I will to see more of Anthony watch Ramos. that shit. Yeah. Uh, I I am someone who is against Dwayne the Rock Johnson joining every single uh franchise ever. Yeah. But but if I can get Dwayne the Rock Johnson in the Transformers series, I'm in. Hmm. Um, and Kevin Hart. And Ke- yeah, he's just yeah, he's just there. Yeah, I, I think it had yeah. some. Like it had some of the generic beats that a transformer, like the, the big blockbuster, tends to have, and I feel like that was the downfall on some of Bumblebee's things as well. With like some of the stuff was just painfully generic, but then it had some pretty good moments in there. Uh, I don't really yeah. like the, the fake out deaths that much that they that they kind of do over and over again in Transformers. Yeah, uh, but I mean the the action was was pretty pretty fun looked pretty good pretty I fun. had a good time with pretty Jurassic Beast but it's been so long since I watched the other Transformers films and I, 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 yeah. feel, I feel like, I like some people have told me it's, them. yeah it's it's some people have told me that they're really fun um so I'll keep that I really like in the mind original Michael Bay one. ones they're so good like they're yeah. just so good I, I mean there's there's something enjoyable. about the the spectacle of the transformation that he nails yeah. in these movies and they don't really do that in bumblebee and in this new one that's just something that he mm. nails uh w- which is not something that adds to a great movie it a- adds to a great spectacle a great moment yeah and uh yeah i mean not every movie has to be like five stars uh like acclaimed by critics of course but they can they can be a spectacle and, and still be a good movie you know uh yeah, yeah. So that's but all yeah, the stuff that you've been the, watching. No, 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 no. More? No. Okay. Don't you okay. dare Secret, segue away from Secret There's I- one more thing. Okay. And I watched it this <laughs> afternoon. Yep. And I want to show you mm-hmm. this. Come on, focus. Kill Bill. Focus. I don't Lucky Lung number 11. John Wick chapter. Oh, that's already out in the steel book. Is it a 4K? 4K for it's a chapter book 4? 4K. Ooh, the Babu Yaga. I like that art style. That, like. Ready? 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 It looks sick. On the back. Oh, Donnie Yen on the back. Okay. Yeah. All in red. So good. I love it. That looks great. So yeah, I just watched. I just watched a few scenes. Yeah, of chapter four. Yeah, it was good. It was good. So that's it. It was. It's really good. Uh, all right. So that's all you've been watching. I don't. I don't have a segue, by the way. I'll just like go into the stuff that I've been watching briefly. Uh, go ahead. So, I've been raving about bear season uh the bear season one people have picked up on it not on my account because i was praising it but because it is a great show it and uh some awards as well for uh the lead jeremy allen white i think is his name uh he's he's stunning in it uh a great cast great story uh about like a um really accomplished guy who goes to back to the kitchen uh, like the, the restaurant of his uh, brother that passed away because he uh, killed himself. And it's like a really uh, like dark depiction on the psychologically uh, broken um, industry of, of like, you know, chefs. And this season just goes further down that rabbit hole, does it in an amazing way. It's got like, it's got such a stunning look. It is really fast paced. But it also does like a long take later in, in in the season, and somehow still that long take feels fast pace. Uh, there's like one episode where pretty much everyone who is kind of famous is like in a flashback episode, and that was by far the worst uh, episode in my opinion because it it felt like we got a hit show. Maybe the next up and comer after Barry and Succession is done, um, and yeah, Ted Lasso is also adding that had a bit of buzz, uh, not in a similar way though. And and here they're jumping onto the next thing that people seem to be loving. Like Jamie Lee Curtis was in it, uh, uh, John Mulaney was in it, um, and John Bernthal. It was just a, a ton of people in like just a single episode. They also had a ton of really good guest stars. So I'm talking about the Bear season two so long because I do want to. Put it into your mind that it, it is the show to watch right now. I think it's probably the best that uh, TV has to offer for an ongoing series. 
And uh, yeah, go give it a try. Uh, it's delicious. I watched Sanctuary, uh, like a really bottled up uh, thing about uh, between a sex worker and like a billionaire son that is taking over the company. And it's a really nice back and forth uh, erotic thriller type-ish story that is uh, fun. It's a lot of fun. Can recommend. Uh, then I was invited to the headquarters of Universal here in, in Switzerland to like a private screening. Like, I don't know if I sent you, I'll put it on screen right now for the listeners, but uh, the, the tiny little theater that I was in with like 10 different, 10 seats and uh, yeah, I had a private screening for uh, Ruby Gilman, Teenage Kraken, and I uh, had a, a good time. It, it didn't feel like something super new. It was basically just a coming of age tale of a Kraken that's on land trying to blend, blend in with humans and I guess she doesn't really blend in, although her, like it's it's unfortunately another one of these really dominating type of stories in animated films of recent years where it's always just like the kid who doesn't want to be the thing that the parent wants them to be. So they got to break free. And that's kind of the thing there. But it's made with a lot of compassion. Um, the animation style is, is quite fun. And um it's all right. If you like all, To All The Boys I Loved Before, it's uh, Lana Kandor is the, the um, lead uh, voice performer in it. And it's giving off a lot of like those vibes. So if you like that crowd, we'll uh, eat this one up. Um, but yeah, I watched uh, You Have My Feelings. Can recommend that one as well. Uh, another A24 film between like a screenwriter and a husband. She overhears him say, I don't like a recent book. And it just kind of unfolds from there. Uh, it's really cleverly written. Um, I liked it a lot. And then the R-rated uh, comedy with Jennifer Lawrence, No Hearts Feelings, uh, was quite a bit of fun. Um, I feel like they go over the top a bit at the end, and sometimes like the jokes don't don't land. But I really like the big swing that Jennifer Lawrence takes. It feels like she's giving like zero fucks and just does what she wants right now. And I'm I'm, I'm really glad for her because. I feel like in the studio era of where she was cast in like disfranchise and disfranchise, uh, she couldn't really thrive. And I feel like here she's just having a great time and I'm having a great time alongside her. So go give that a try if you uh, want to see a comedy. And then lastly on Netflix, I watched uh, Skull Island season one animated show because I was keen. Maybe there's some good content around like the King Kong things. It was so incredibly generic and it's, it's like... One of those things where they focus too much on the, the, the humans when I'm way more interested in maybe doing some interesting creature stuff. So can't recommend that one. But that's all the stuff that I've been watching. Uh, I'll also have like a bit of an extended thing where there's a couple more titles that I'll be talking about. Uh, we'll be doing that maybe as like an extra video that's linked below in as an unlisted thing in, a, in just a playlist that you can go check out if you're interested. Uh, but yeah, that's that for this week. So let's get to our main review of the one and only Wes Anderson with Asteroid City. Set in a fictional American desert town circa 1955, the itinerary of the junior stargazer Space Cadet Convention organized to bring students and parents from across the country for fellowship and scholarly competitions is spectacularly disrupted by world-changing events. What a logline. With brackets. Opening and closing. It is, uh, yeah, and I feel like that's weird to me when I read this uh, logline for the first time because it felt like a placeholder logline where someone was wasn't sure what to write specifically, yeah. but it, it it is part of the identity of this movie. It's like the the kind of the in between, the kind of the notes that you give before the actual performance ends up happening because like it's a back and forth of what's reality or is it nothing of it reality. Everything is fabricated, even down to our own lives mm. and like. It's it's not a deep movie. It's a Wes Anderson movie, but like it, it does have a lot of layers to uh, unwrap. And uh, yeah, the movie premiered in Cannes earlier this year. We ended up catching it there, had a blast. Uh, it's the first Wes Anderson movie that I got to see with you. I hope it's not the last because uh, it was great to sit next to you because um, you were laughing a whole bunch um, and it just got me in a good mood as well. So I was just like really receptive for this movie. Uh, and I'm impressed by the cast. Uh, right. Because it's a lot of them. 
There's like Jason Swartzman, yes. Scarlett Johansson, Tom Hanks, Jake Ryan, Jeffrey Wright, Tilda Swinton, Brian Cranston, Edward Norton, Adrian Brody, Liv Schreiber, Hope Davis, uh, Seven Park, Rupert Friend, Maya Hawke, Steve Carell, Matt Dillon, Hong Chao, Willem Dafoe, Margot Robbie, Jeff Goldblum. Oh, <laughs> Jeff Goldblum is probably my favorite. <laughs> uh, but yeah, there's a, there's a ton of them in there. Uh, we'll get into that, a, 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 I guess, a bit more if um, maybe it was too much. Uh, but I'm surprised because I tried to look up, uh, get a good quote of how much this movie cost. Because essentially, Wes mm -hmm. Anderson movies, especially this one, uh, shine in the production design and the whole look of it is carefully crafted. And like every little, every single inch is like, you know, there's, yeah. there's dedication to it. There's craft to it. He's in control of everything. Um, sometimes even to the detriment where it's too much. I feel like it balances it well here. But this movie, what do you think? How much did it cost? With that cast, with that look, how, how expensive uh, is it? 50 mil. Half 20, that. No, 20, I was going to say 25. Tw yeah, sure. You definitely didn't see that in the show notes where I put it down, right? Uh, <laughs> no, I'm not even on the show notes. Oh, ah, okay, 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 notes. okay, okay. Uh, but no, you, you, you are right, I guess, totally. Uh, 25 million is what this movie cost, which is impressive. But I also get it because it's kind of a simple movie when you break it down. There's not a lot of like big scenes that cost a ton of money apart from essentially just creating its own town, you know, all of the production design, the set design mm. stuff. And then I guess the cast, which is just, they just have a blast in being a Wes Anderson movie. So maybe their rate isn't like as, as high. But uh, I haven't even set the rating so far. Like, has this movie been received positively? I mean, on Letterboxd, it's a 3.8. On IMDb, it's a 7.1. On Metacritic, it's 75. So very positive uh, compared to maybe some other Wes Anderson films that get more universal praise or have a big fan base. This seems to be on the lower end of that. And especially here locally, which is, I guess, really anecdotal, a lot of like the Swiss critics were quite critical of it. And for me, firsthand, as we are showing this movie in theaters, like right now, um, I've heard from a couple of people that like, oh yeah, we're going to watch this. We like Wes Anderson. Although the, the, like the reviews weren't great. And I'm a bit surprised because it felt like there was, there was a buzz coming out of Garden for this movie and it felt palpable. Some people didn't like it, but they also were like in the similar vein that they didn't like the French dispatch. You think mm. this is a good Wes Anderson movie? Is, is it one of the, one of the really good ones or where, where does it kind of fall in line in his filmography? It, I don't think it rises as one of his really good ones. I think it yeah. rises as one of his good ones. I think yeah. Wes Anderson has peaked. Am I going to say it? Yeah, I'm going to say it. I think Wes Anderson might have peaked with, with Grand Budapest. Grand Budapest and Fantastic Mr. Fox. They yeah. were both two really good mixtures of style and substance where mm -hmm. more recently he's been going on the style path. He has been coming back with substance. This is a great example of a film that yeah. does have a bit of substance to it, and that is nice to see, but it's not a complete return to form. We did say this in, in Khan. This is a return to form for Wes. It, yeah. is a, it is a film that is good mm -hmm. and is enjoyable and is funny and is, and is fun to watch yeah but but is it a really good wes anderson film now you've got me thinking that's why i stopped halfway through that sentence i'm actually thinking no <laughs> it's not no it doesn't no it doesn't no 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 no. yeah i yeah. would still say it's like a tier not a plus not s tier do you think that to you i feel like there's nothing below b tier maybe one and c tier uh right if you had to rank them maybe bottle For rocket wes? yeah yeah you know, the, the the range is way higher. It's it's I, like closer to getting. Yeah, in the I would quality. say most of his stuff is 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 still really good. Which, by the way, it, if you're interested, I, if you didn't see, we did do a bracket where we put the movies all up against each other, uh, and we did kind of spoil what maybe we fought with some of the the finalists there. But I mean, it's fairly obvious. Uh, but for, the thing you just people. asked me though was, they're all like. Not, yeah, nothing close... really above C, above yeah, C yeah. tier, right? The thing mm -hmm. is, if we're comparing no, below, them to below. the rest of Hollywood, I think that they are really high. Like, I think his yeah. work is is really good. But if mm -hmm. I have to rate him, I do think there is some D, E tier stuff. 
okay. uh, in his work. In in his work, he definitely yeah, has yeah, lower not, not an entire stuff. movie. Yeah, yeah. Or you think yeah. an entire movie or the shorts? I, I don't. Maybe this is also a bit reductive because ultimately we really enjoy uh, his movies for what they are. Uh, you more than than I do because I do tend to kind of grow old of, of maybe a specific style. Uh, but I don't know if if he's capable to do much more beyond that. But I like like many people, I do like when it was smaller scale with uh, like a smaller scale with less characters focused on the family dynamics a bit more. And it, it does give you hints of all of that in this, uh, which, by the way, we do have a non-spoiler review for this already out from back when we in Gun. Um, so uh, we'll give you a spoiler warning here. We'll get we'll get into maybe specifics. Having a, had like the time since Gun to think about it, uh, have any of your feelings changed on maybe the the, the cast in there? Uh, because in in the moment it was it was maybe fun to see like cameos pop up but in the last few weeks since we've come back we've had a lot of movies that were like here's a cameo fest and this feels oddly similar to that in the art house space doesn't it this feels oddly similar yeah what of do you like mean? here's margot robbie in like one flashback scene here's jeff goldblum right as we pass uh, he's an alien in stop motion but we get like one shot of him in the entire movie Willem Dafoe is in this, got like four scenes, maybe, you know? Or is it still part of that story kind of loosely? We just don't get a no. lot of these characters, so it's different than actual cameos? So I won't consider Wes Anderson films to have cameos. I mm -hmm. will see Wes Anderson films as an ensemble cast. Like right. he, he picks an ensemble cast. They're yeah. not hired due to them playing a character and playing themselves. Because yeah. in a way, almost every single one of the characters on screen plays a very, uh, 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 plays a part of themselves in a very dull way. Almost mm -hmm. every single, I mean, especially Jeff Goldblum, but uh, almost every single cameo-like feature in Asteroid City, it's handled in a way that works. Mm-hmm. Because, like, you, think you so? could consider, yeah. I mean, Brian Cranston's narrator aspect could yeah. be considered, you know, cameo esque. Uh, I don't no, think it is. I don't think it is. Margot either. Robbie's. Okay, Margot, so Margot Robbie Robbie's is. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So you're saying people who are in just one scene? Yeah. Then no, but, I don't, uh, yeah, no, I don't think, I don't count them as, like, to the same degree as cameos as we have okay. had in other films of recent memory. Yeah. It's maybe it's just like that we've been conditioned by a lot of the Hollywood space to um, kind of associate uh, a big named uh, performer with a leading role. So when it's part of an ensemble and it's this big, it's usually it's it, like when they just have one scene, it's a bit harder to see them as the character and not the actor who's doing that one moment in the film, if that makes sense. Which. I feel like isn't a I can, big I get what you're saying but I I can I can Right thing okay. is, I get what you're saying like like these big Hollywood A-listers having one one little role one little task I mean yeah. best example uh Brad Pitt in Deadpool right just like a split second That's yeah that's definitely a cameo Right Yeah yeah That's a that's a cameo but it's done in such a way that it's quite funny like you, you don't get much of that character, but all of a sudden, boom! It's Brad Pitt. It's, it's also go, yeah. It's oh, also fuck, about the shock. Funny. Yeah, it's also about the shock of hey, yeah. this is this big name character, and it, that's not this at all. It's like it, it feels more. But like I don't think they like Wes Anderson, Anderson picks these and, characters for that. And yeah, you you got someone like that in it, and I feel like it adds. It, it does make sense weirdly in this story, which once you start to uh, uncover the layers of like you got this performance in asteroid city that is a play that's been put on and we one layer back as it is like kind of you know uh set up by the directors a writer and you get the rest of the cast in like a different setting as well and it you know in, in that way all of it is fabricated so it, it does make sense maybe if there's in that world that he creates to have like those type of roles in it as well um, uh, it's, it's not a, it's not a big critique. There's just a lot of people in there. Um, and the people that we focus on with Scarlett Johansson and, uh, Jason Schwartzman, they're, they're quite fun. 
Uh, to, to me, like one of my, maybe we're going to get into favorite moments. I, once I got that it's Roadrunner, I think, well, which was after the fact, but then remembering the scenes back, that's really funny, especially like the opening thing. To me, without like, that's the thing that I didn't know that was, it was Roadrunner and you had to tell me yada, yada, yada. Shut the fuck up, Lachlan. We know by now. You've told everyone, okay? I'm not embarrassed anymore. Uh, but <laughs> it's just like a funny moment by itself. Just Roadrunner mm. thing, just like r running past and making that like, sp uh, like iconic sound. Um, but I really enjoyed the the daughters of, of Jason Swartzman, uh, Swartzman's character, because they are like so quippy and and uh, it's it's fast paced deadpan ish humor uh, mm -hmm. that I think really works. And I think for yeah. some of the stuff between Scarlet and 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 Jason on first name basis, uh, hmm. it didn't really work for me for the stuff where it got a bit more emotional between the two of them. But for the comedic bits, I think it, it works quite well. I also didn't like it with Brian Cranston's na narration at times, but when it broke that formula and he was like, oh, I'm in the wrong scene, I think that was also a really funny moment. But uh, what are, what are you, yeah. uh, some of your favorite moments from the movie? Uh, for me, I, th I think like the... It's it's real spoilery, but the whole yeah, moment yeah, with spoilers. the aliens have always been yeah, were just like the parts that I uh, remember because they mm -hmm. were so weird and so much fun and like it was just very funny. And then the follow through mm -hmm. with the alien was also quite good. I also I really enjoyed all of the breaking the fourth wall aspects to this yeah. film. Uh, going into the Brian Cranston and uh, who was on the outside. Uh, Adrian Brody. Uh, Adrian Brody, yes. Edward Norton. But, uh, Edward Norton. Edward yeah. Norton being the writer. Those scenes where he's like talking to an audience. Uh, anything with Edward Norton in it in this in this movie was really engaging because obviously mm -hmm. he's the writer of this narrative that we're watching. So yeah, yeah. For me, I wouldn't say this specific moment because I don't think there's a moment that this film makes me lock on and go, yeah, this is really good. But there are moments that I go, as a whole, this is great. Something that I quite enjoyed that, that is like early on as we get introduced to the town is like that unfinished bridge thing. It, it's such a simple little yeah. gag, but it is incredibly funny. It's just, it's so yeah. funny. And he does a lot of, with, uh, with the, with the, the, the staging, obviously that's his whole stick, uh, shtick where like, where he puts the camera, how he frames stuff, stuff up and stuff like that. And then he, he's, his blocking with the actors is also like very strong adding to it. And he, he's got all of the quintessential stuff where you got, the, I, I guess, following. You got the, the like quick uh, back and forths in dialogue. You got the split screen. Um, oh, I didn't. Oh, getting to what we didn't like. I didn't like Tom Hanks. <laughs> Forgot that he was in this. Maybe it's just I don't like Fair. Tom Hanks. I don't know, but he just, Ooh. he didn't fit into this world to me, I think. All right. All right. Yeah. Hate like, America's sweetheart. favorite actor. His, his favorite, their, their favorite tennis player. Not America's ass. That, that's, that's Captain America, but America's favorite uh, mentally. Yeah, never, never mind. I'm not making a Forrest Gump joke. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think someone that like stood out to me in like the, the little moments uh, was Matt Dillon. <laughs> I had quite a good time with his character. Uh, Steve Carell, I don't really remember that much. Uh, but th there were a couple where I f felt like they, they weren't given a lot, like Maya Hawk uh, with her group of children. Um, was like, all right. It, it was like, it, it didn't really need that, in my opinion. Uh, enjoy yep. Jeffrey Wright, uh, the whole like secondary love story uh, with uh, Jake Ryan um, was uh, quite cute. Any anything else uh, you want to bring up? Something that you like? Something that you didn't like? Uh, the music was really good. Uh, ah, yeah, film. Uh, it definitely was a standout for me. Uh, I also think that narratively, this has oh yeah, the been chapters more... and everything, right? Yeah, this has never been more stylized as a narrative in the sense that he's tr still trying to separate it into moments mm -hmm. like he did with French Dispatch, 
but still very cohesive. So it's a singular narrative with some sort of explorative outside fourth wall breaks. But it, it it's a focused story, which Wes hasn't done in a while. And, and when I say a while, I mean French Dispatch was a big departure of that with telling different narratives. And, and he does like doing that. And I'm not saying he shouldn't do that. Mm. He has done that. And, and I mean, a great example is French, uh, not French Dispatch, um, Grand Budapest. There is different eras that happen at the start of that film. And that's good. Yeah. It establishes time and establishes history and establishes you know, something meaningful with this hotel. But in this film, he does kind of keep it one main narrative. And mm. then by the end, it does go a little bit fucking haywire. I will admit that. Yeah. But it did lose it's me still a bit. pretty good. Yeah. I think once we go back and forth and break that line between uh, the created and the creation, I, yeah, especially, I think the, all of the, the stuff with Adrian Brody, like the director, writer stuff, is in black and white and it's a really really mm. harsh contrast to a uh, really vibrant looking asteroid city uh and i didn't really enjoy the time that we spent outside of asteroid city uh that much because yeah. i just wanted more of, of that and there's like also a time skip in it right uh and yeah i ultimately i, I would have liked a bit more character stuff because it had the basis there it was it was going for it but it didn't really dig deep uh in expense of mm. having like smaller moments with Matt Dillon, with Maya Hawk, something outside, uh, which is fine because it was really ent entertaining and it had funny bits. Uh, jokes mostly landed, but I, I did kind of want a bit more at the, at, at the like the central family, the two central families with Scarlett and uh, Scarlett Johansson and Jason Schwartzman's um, families. But uh, yeah, anything else to add or are you ready to share your rating for Asteroid City? I think I pretty much nailed it on the head. Oh, yeah. I think. Yes, for sure. Like central, the nail was just there. It came in stop motion. You hit that nail right in there, sunk in. Yeah. yeah. I, for some reason, I do yeah. feel like there, there's a sequence. Maybe it's Guillermo de Toro's animation where like it's really, maybe it's also on TikTok. That really satisfying thing of just, um, I don't know if this makes sense at all, just describing it. But there's a nail and you hit it and it just like uh, like kind of slides in without any effort and like some, a beautiful creation. The, basically a, crea mm. a creation uh, being depicted in a way that I don't know if that is in either of the Wes Anderson uh, stop motion movies. I think it's probably Guillermo de Toro's one, one of those, but I love to see that. And that's just what I'm picturing how you reviewed this movie. You nailed it on its head, which is such a tangent just to say. What's your rating, Lachlan? Uh, four stars out of five. Let's go. We agree on this. It's a uh, return to form, like we called it, for Wes Anderson. I do agree. That's also my rating for the film. Uh, now, if you had to pair this movie up with another one, what would you choose, Lachlan? What's the double feature pick for Asteroid City? Uh, another Asteroid movie, Armageddon. So good. <laughs> Watch that one. Sure. Send... Sure. Drillers is there anyone, into space. Is there anyone from Asteroid City that's also in Armageddon? I don't think so. Let no. me find out. You tell us your pick and I'll see if I can find a connection. All right. So I'm ha, going down the Explorer route because next week we'll be talking about Indiana Jones 5. You should catch up on the most important Indiana Jones film to date and watch Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Uh, just because I know you don't want to, but you should. Because maybe you'll find something that you'd appreciate in the film. And it's nice because, you know, the other three are pretty solid. You'd say great movies. Maybe the second one is a bit more contested there. But the fourth one is where people really don't like it. And I'm keen to uh, hear what people think of this latest one, if it will resonate with audiences. We've already seen it. We've already reviewed it. You can go check that out. Our spoiler-free re review next week will have our spoiler-filled thoughts. And I will be giving the fourth one a rewatch as well to see if I maybe like it more than the new one or yeah. if it is just as bad as I remember. 
Did you uh, figure out who's in Armageddon? We 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 almost had a connection here because uh, yeah. Owen Wilson is in Armageddon, and that would have been is. such an easy one. But he's but he's not, not in Asteroid City. Oh. Yeah, how crazy is that? He's not in Asteroid City, which is even because he's uh, wild, right? Who would have thought that? Uh, I'm yeah. just double checking because I'm just like looking at the people who I think could have been in the movie. But uh, you well, know, I do have like, another thing like about Wes Anderson. I do have another thing about Asteroid City that I forgot to mention. If you may, maybe some people caught that, but I caught it and I found it so funny because I, I had no, no one really talk about it in reviews after the fact is that and the opening and the whole narrative framework of the story is like a play. So it gives you kind of the, the brochure and like the overview of what's to come. And it literally spells out the entire story of like the alien arrives in this and this and that. And it also says like Jeff Goldblum as the alien. Uh, so for the whole movie, I was also expecting Jeff Go Jeff Goldblum to be in like a costume or do the voice for it, and it was so funny when he didn't talk. Uh, so yeah, that was something that I quite enjoyed. So maybe on your rewatch, pay attention to like the little synopsis thing because it, it does tell you the entire plot of the of the movie. I don't I don't think right. There's anyone from Armageddon, so it's a, a, a true double feature. You get to double down on the actors. Uh, lots of stars across those two features for you. And for me, you get to see Shia LaBeouf, Shia LaBeouf, uh, or whatever, how I see his name, I don't, I don't fucking know. And uh, Harrison Ford, uh, Duke it out. And there's also Cape Blanchett, it is, as a Nazi, which is not a great performance. She's great. On this. Mm, I don't know. I don't know. I, I need to rewatch it. I need to rewatch it. Maybe I like it more. Anyways, uh, this week, the new releases on June 30th, we've already said. Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny is hitting theaters nationwide, internationally. The latest and last chapter in uh, Harrison Ford's run as the titular archaeologist. Uh, yeah, will be reviewed by us next week in spoiler fashion. Also, the movie I briefly shared my thoughts on earlier, uh, Universal X DreamWorks in uh, Ruby Gilman, Teenage Kraken. Uh, is one that is going to be for the younger teenage audiences. feel like this movie is not going to do too well because it's a really crowded market, but um, it's it's all right. It's pretty good. So go give that, uh, those a try and let us know what you'll be watching this week. But that's it for the show. Uh, Lachlan, do you have any, have any closing notes for uh, this week's episode? Uh, I Look, I just want to ascend no, into my own little spaceship. I don't. I don't. I, I, I you know, I, I, w I would love to enter and exit the frame in a way that the, the alien does in Asteroid City. I feel like it's so, yeah. you know, you just come in from the right, go down, you descend, you grab something, go up and just leave the same way again. It's oddly compelling. Um, and I don't think we've even been like in the center of the frame. I feel like we, we've done Wes Anderson a disservice with our review here, at mm. least visually. Uh, but yeah. Uh, thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel to not miss uh, the weekly episodes. We got a bunch of bonus stuff. Go check out the Wes Anderson Bracket uh, and some other videos are in the works and a new show that we can tease. So uh, thanks for watching and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.